say this class is full, I have extra chair, okay? And a student wants to say that, but I'm actually right in front of it. Can that student come and sit on this chair? Mm -hmm. If this is an actin molecule, the place where the student can sit is the myosin binding site, okay? I'm blocking it, right? He or she cannot sit. So I myself is the, what? Tropomyosin, and my hand is extended out, is a troponin, and my palm would be the calcium binding site. So, if a student wants to use my chair, what do you think I say? <laughs> what does this mean? <laughs> exactly. Give me cash. Give me money. Yeah, you could use my chair. Does that make sense? Okay? Does that make sense? So, she, he or she wants to use my chair to sit down. I'm like, fine. Give me some cash, and I'll let you use my chair. Same thing. So, TTC is closing up the myosin binding sites. Tropomyosin, troponin, calcium binding site. So when calcium comes and binds there, that pulls on tropomyosin. It actually, as soon as calcium binds there, troponin pulls tropomyosin and it moves over, exposing the myosin binding sites. Does that make sense? Yeah. So in here, do you see that right now, the tropomyosin is closing up the myosin binding sites because there's no calcium back. Now, calcium comes into play, and right here is calcium is bound to troponin. As soon as calcium binds, do you see <coughs> that the TTC just moved over, and now myosin binding sites are exposed? Does that make sense? Okay. So, how? Calcium binds troponin, troponin pulls on tropomyosin, myosin, and moves it over, exposing myosin by the excitement. Calcium binds troponin, troponin goes on top of myosin and moves it over, exposing the myosin binding sites. Okay? Does that make sense? Figure numbers that doesn't portray to you. Now let's talk about the new conjunction. Do you have any questions? So right now we have discussed basically structure of troponin or structure of thin filament, structure of thick filament, how they're located, their interaction. Because if you don't understand this basic stuff, when you actually learn muscle contraction in physiology, it won't make sense to you. And if you have me for physiology, because I'm going to, uh, me and another teacher, Felton, she's going to be teaching physiology next term. So if you have me, I've already taught this. So if I recognize, I will probably recognize my students. I will pick on you. Okay. 
what is the structure of this? Because I expect you to know it. So when the binding sites are exposed, where does that calcium come from? We'll talk about that a bit later. I haven't even gotten to that. But let's see if you can figure out. Where does the calcium come from? What part of the muscle has calcium? The blood vessel. What was the sheet that I covered? Nope. So the Sarcoplasmic reticulum. Remember I told you sarcoplasmic reticulum was the calcium storage site? That's where the calcium comes from. Now what allows that calcium to escape, that's a different story, which we'll have to talk about this neuromuscular Okay? So where did that calcium come from? From the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And that covers the my eye Yes, it closes the mind. Yes. <coughs> um, between skeletal muscle, yeah, this is skeletal muscle. The cardiac muscle, smooth muscle, this stuff a little bit different. Yeah. Um, we tend to just cover skeletal muscle because if you understand skeletal muscle, you understand. Uh, smooth and cardiac muscle, there's only a minor differences, but you'll learn that in this well when you actually talk about contraction, the cycle of contraction, how contraction occurs. Okay. But because I have not taught you the difference between cardiac, skeletal, and smooth, right now for you, everything is the same. Okay? When you go into physiology or other courses, you will learn the differences. But right now, if I put on a question, but asking you the same thing regarding cardiac, you can't be saying, well, I don't know. Right now, for you, everything is the same. You have, we haven't gotten that in detail to now start making detail differences. Okay? Now, what is a neuromuscular junction? What does the name tell you? Neuromuscular junction. Huh? Junction between? And a muscle. Neuromuscular junction is a junction found between a nerve and a muscle. Okay. What is the function of the neuromuscular junction? Allow the um, muscle cell to get activated, to stimulate the muscle cell. Function of neuromuscular junction is to allow the muscle cell to get activated. Or to allow interaction between the neuron and the muscle cell. Let me, excuse me, draw it, and then you guys can draw it.
through all this. Uh, this is the axon and the axon terminal. So you have, I did not draw the cell body and the dendrite, but it's all the back, okay? Axon, axon terminal. In the axon terminal, you have vesicles containing a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine. Okay? ACH stands for acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter. What is a neurotransmitter? Neurotransmitter is a chemical found in the brain. Neurotransmitter is a chemical that neurons will release. Okay? Does that make sense? Acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter. Neurotransmitter is a chemical found in the brain released by the neurons. Axon. Then here's an axon, here's an axon terminal. Within the axon terminal, you find vesicles containing the neurotransmitter called acetylcholine. Okay? This is a calcium channel. Here is a calcium channel. Now, do you this is a muscle cell? Okay, this entire thing is a muscle cell. Now the muscle cell has parts. These are the receptors. This is where the neurotransmitter will bind. Okay. These are T tubules. T tubules. Okay. These are passageways which are T tubules. This is the sarcoplasmic reticulum, which is the calcium storage site. Sarcoplasmic reticulum, which is a calcium storage site. These are the sarcomeres, which contain thick and thin filaments. Sarcomeres, which contain thick and thin filaments. Thank you. 
S A R C O M E R E. S A R C O M O E R E. Supplement. Now, so quickly, if you miss anything, axon, axon terminal containing um, acetylcholine containing vesicles, healthy channel, muscle cell uh, receptors on its surface, T tubules. Um, sarcoplasmic reticulum, which contains calcium, sarcomere, which contains thick and thin filaments. Now, do you see the space? Isn't this a junction between the neuron and the muscle cell? Mm -hmm. So this space is the neuromuscular junction. This space is the neuromuscular junction. between a neuron and a neuron, or a neuron and a muscle cell. Does that make sense? Synaptic cleft is a space be found between a neuron and another structure. Okay? So its common name is synaptic cleft. But I'll tell you why we say neuromuscular junction. Does that make sense? So a junction found between a neuron and something else, that space, is called synaptic cleft. Okay? But why do you call this one neuromuscular junction, not synaptic cleft? Mm -hmm. It is synaptic cleft, but you tend to name it basically um, neuromuscular junction. So let's say her last name is Smith. Smith, Smith, Smith. Why do I call her Carly, Jennifer, what? I, I'm sorry, I know that's a name. Exactly. So, between a neuron and a neuron, it's a synaptic cleft. Between a neuron and a muscle, it's a synaptic cleft. If I just tell you there's a synaptic cleft, how do you know if I'm talking about between a neuron and a neuron, a neuron and a muscle? To avoid confusion, you, whenever there's a space found between a neuron and a neuron, you call it synaptic cleft. Anytime you find it between a neuron and a muscle, you call it neuromuscular junction. It's, it's still, neuromuscular junction is still a synaptic cleft. It's just you tend to call it neuromuscular junction to avoid confusion. Does that make sense? Now, why am I telling you this right now? Because any membrane which is found before the synaptic cleft, because this is still a synaptic cleft, right? Any membrane which is found before the synaptic cleft, so is an axon, the membrane of the axon terminal found before the synaptic cleft? It's called the presynaptic membrane. Pre means before. Synaptic means a synapse, membrane. So the membrane found before the space. So this is the presynaptic membrane. Make sense? How would you call, keeping the same um, rules in mind, how would you call this membrane? Postsynaptic membrane because it's a membrane found after the synapse. So you have presynaptic membrane, you have postsynaptic membrane. Acetylcholine. 
Now, you have multiple types of neurotransmitter. ACH is a neurotransmitter. We have multiple types. But the neurotransmitter, which is found in the neuromuscular junction, is only acetylcholine. You won't find any other type of neurotransmitter. It's always acetylcholine within the neuromuscular junction. Yeah? Um, I forgot. Okay. What is this? Axon terminal, right? This is the axon terminal. Um, I forgot to label this one, which would be six. What is this? Um, calcium. calcium channel. What is this? It's a muscle cell. Post-synaptic membrane. This is the pre-synaptic membrane, right? P-O-P-R. Pre-synaptic membrane, post-synaptic membrane. What are these little molecules? ACH, which has entered the synaptic cell. Does that make sense? Yes. These little things are the chemicals which were released. The acetylcholine. So it's for uh, just a muscle cell. Yeah. Muscle cell cell. Okay. Uh, muscle cell. It's pointing to the entire thing. because you could have uh, you could have another neuron on the back. It's the reason it's called the pre because this one is gonna be whichever one is releasing something before it's the pre. Whichever is receiving is a post. Does that make sense? Yeah. What do you mean this? Yes. It's just brain tissue. Just because you have neurons that you have brain tissue. Junction, um, acetylcholine, containing vesicles, axon terminal, calcium channel, uh, muscle cell, receptor, presynaptic membrane, acetylcholine, postsynaptic membrane. I'm sorry. So just, sorry, just, just to clarify, um, the axon is the presynaptic membrane. Yes. And the muscle cell is the postsynaptic. Post Muscle contraction is um, dependent on four principles. Skeletal muscle activation by nerve. Act, um, activation increases calcium around the contractile proteins. Calcium prevents contraction to occur and it's absent. So if you don't have calcium, um, there's no more um, contraction, so there's relaxation, okay? So calcium prevents contraction and it's absent prevents contraction. No stimulation by a nerve, then you have contraction, and, and that's when the muscle cell is found in a relaxation state. Does that make sense? So somebody asked me, if you don't have calcium, do you have relaxation? Yes, but why, why there is no calcium? Because if you have stimulation by a nerve, you have calcium. If the nerve is no longer stimulating, there's no more calcium in your relaxation. Okay? But it's due to... Relaxation occurs because the nerve is no longer stimulating the muscle cell. In, in turn, yet yeah, there's no calcium. Does that make sense? Um, 